Hi, good evening everyone. I'm Natanya and welcome back at our Every Nation Campus Gand Midweek service. Over the last two weeks, I was on holiday, a much needed holiday. And I hope that you have been able to go on holiday as well this summer um, and that you have been able to enjoy it just as I did, even though it's like special circumstances and lots of restrictions but just having the rest did me really, really well. But I'm really glad to be back tonight. And um, we are still busy at our September series, Good, Better, Best. And over the last two weeks, you all had the privilege of having Trevor to listen to. Our Trevor is our senior pastor here at Every Nation Gens. And um, he's actually my mentor and he's the reason why I am doing student work and doing what I'm doing. And I hope you've enjoyed that. Now, I hope you're all doing well. I hope that your hair exam is, if you had them, went well. And some of you have already started with school again, with university. Uh, but University of Ghent is starting officially next week. So um, if you're already back in Ghent, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. I would just love to connect with you. I've already heard some of you. And it's so good to actually see you back. Now, over the next few weeks, we are going to definitely keep you posted on new developments on how we will do campus in the next year with all the restrictions. Are we going to do our normal stuff? And as much as possible, we are going to try to have community and uh, to come together with regards and taking all the measurements and precautions that we have to from the government. So just so you know, we are looking into that. We are busy preparing that. We've bought stacks of hand sanitizer and just sanitizer in general. And we are going to see if yeah, how we can have community and see each other with following all the restrictions and taking all the precautions um, as one to. So just know so that we are busy with, we are coming up with a plan. We are actually meeting with our team this week for that. So um, I would say pray for us, think about us. If you have any tips or tricks, do let us know. Um, but we want to be there for you. So next week is the official start. And next week, we'll also give you more explanation of what this campus year will look like. And I, for one, am super excited because it's a year with lots of potential new creative ideas that we haven't done before. And I'm looking forward to that. And I hope you are too. Now, it's just the evening time for our midweek service. And last week, Trevor spoke about God and time. If you haven't heard that one, please do go watch it again. Um, it's on Trevor's YouTube channel, and you can find the link on our Facebook play page. Um, and it was really, really good because time is our most valuable resource. It's the one resource that we can never get back once it's gone. And um, Trevor really explains what, how we can use time in uh, either as in me living out of the flesh, out of my own strength, um, out of my own capacity, trying to manage it best to, to my best thinking versus me living out of the spirit and living a life in connection with God. And today I want to take it a little bit further on that. So are you ready? Let's pray before we start, shall we? Father, I thank you for everyone that's watching. I thank you for everyone that yeah, just had good hair exams. And I, Father, I pray just for this service, Father Lord, that you would really come with your Holy Spirit, with your presence in our houses, in our dorms, in our homes, wherever we are at, God. Father, I pray that tonight is a night that we can meet you. And Father, that you want to minister to all of us, God, wherever we are at. Lord Jesus, you are the son of God. He died for our sins and you rose again from the dead after three days, God, proving that you are the son of God. And tonight, Father, we want to honor and celebrate that in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So are you ready? So tonight I want to talk to you about peace in love, resilient and strong yet soft and well, a little bit vulnerable really. And basically I came up with this topic because 
um, as I was talking to our students this week, I kind of noticed and realized that, well, basically there is still a lot of insecurity going on. And if I looked in my own life in the last few weeks, um, there actually has been uh, some insecurities that I have had a hard time dealing with. And if I look in the past, um, for example, my parents always used to say whenever whenever they would be changing something in our plans I would react on that I have a very hard time dealing with change sometimes and especially it used to be a lot worse than it is now but it's definitely being improving but um, change is hard for me and over the last few years, um, my family kind of has developed this attitude of like, oh yeah, it's not Danya, like whatever, she can't handle change. And um, like, they don't mean bad with that. Like, it's nothing bad. It's just like, oh yeah, it's not Danya. We know where this is coming from. And over the last few years, we've really noticed that, well, first of all, for me, it's not so much fun if people say that, because I'm still struggling at that point, at that moment. And especially when it is a change that I have no control over, or when it's a situation that I have no control over, and um, specifically even if it happens last minute. I'll give an example over the last few years. So here in my job as a student worker, um, we actually had one time this event planned on a Sunday. So that was after our church service and me and some friends of mine and my coworkers, we had wrestled out where the tables were going to be, that we were going to eat downstairs in this specific room because the kitchen was there. And um, well, other people that were still there would just have to go out or go to another room and it would be fine. So we had a plan, it was approved. And all of a sudden my mentor shows up and he says, no, 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 that's not gonna work. Like literally, we are already prepping, putting the tables out. Uh, it's already standing ready. And he comes in and he's like, no, that's not going to work. You have to clean up. You will have to do it later, at a later time. And you will have to do it upstairs in a different room. But it's a much smaller space and you were with a lot of people. And all my stuff was downstairs. So at that point, I just started freaking out and I was like, ah, so I basically, I ran out. I go, went for a walk. I, I needed some time alone. I needed to get grounded again. And I came back and I was able to go with the plan. Now, why am I saying this? We all are sometimes in situations where we feel out of control. And well, basically this whole last few six months have really felt out of control. And I can imagine what I'm hearing for some students is that this academic year feels kind of out of control because we've never had an academic school year like, well, this one before. No one knows what to expect. We have no control whatsoever over the situations. And reality is, um, maybe you're a little bit like me and you don't like change as much or you like to be in control and most people kind of like to be in control. So that's kind of normal. And tonight I want to talk to you about why there is peace in love and why that is so important because, well, if we can have the ultimate source of love in our lives, you will also see that that brings peace. So I want to take you to 1 John 4 verse 18, where it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Are you someone that feels like, for example, if you've done something wrong or you're afraid that you're gonna get rejected when you do something wrong, or maybe you get stressed when you feel that you need the approval of other people in order for you to do something and you're afraid to lose that approval, fear of approval, fear of men. Um, some of you might be afraid to lose control uh, or might fear change 
because that makes you feel vulnerable. And reality is most of those fears they go hand in hand with fear of someone's you seeing you for who you really are, thinking that you're not good enough and actually punishing you for that. And that form of punishment can be disapproval, can be rejection, can actually be yelling or consequences like getting fired. And most of us like to be in control because we are afraid of that. And or a lot of us at least. And here it says that fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears has not been perfect in love. Now, what does that mean? Like, Natanya, come on. Fear, love. So the opposite of love is fear. That's the first. Here it says that perfect love casts out fear. Where is there such a thing as perfect love? Can I be in love and be perfect? Like, can I be perfect? Or is it imperfect? What makes perfect love perfect love? And what gives it the power to cast out fear? So when I'm afraid, for example, as a kid, if I would take a cookie too many, I would be afraid to get punished or that my parents would pick up on it. If I would fight with my brothers, I would be afraid to get punished. So I would try and hide it or deny it. Um, and that just shows that I wasn't, that, or that we are not very confident in just the love at that point. And we fear the punishment. Um, but where there is perfect love, the child runs to the parent and they don't run away. If we are afraid of punishment or we have fear in general in our lives, we hide, we close ourselves off. But with perfect love, we actually run to the father or to, to someone, to the parent. So what happens when we fear? First of all, we get into a threat-based mindset. Um, and we go into four different kinds of reactions. First of all, we can go fight. No, you're wrong. I am right. We're going to do it my way. And we go head to head. Two rhinos. Or second response is a flight response. Let's talk about something else. I am going into complete denial. I'm going to go watch Hawaii Five O, or I'm going to go watch Criminal Minds or whatever your favorite binge watching program is, or I'm going to start talking all of my favorite foods and start eating all of a sudden because I'm fleeing whatever problem there is at hand. Then we have the freeze response. Freeze is where you literally just freeze up. You don't talk anymore. You don't listen anymore. You don't learn anymore. You just zoom out. You're literally not there. You can't handle it. You're not present. Um, you just freeze up, literally, like an ice cube. And then we have the fun response. Fun is where you kind of keep performing uh, at the circle, and there is a level of engagement, um, but it's not completely like you start performing in order to prevent whatever you're afraid of. Um, that's the last one. So performance is definitely part of that. And fear makes us look for threats. We are no longer looking for connection. We're no longer looking for opportunities. We're actually looking for threats and we're going to react to those in order to protect ourselves. So fear keeps us actually away from connection. Fear keeps us away from anything we see as a potential threat. Fear drives us and drives our actions and our reactions for protection first and not for connection. Now, therein lies the problem because control, for example, is one reaction to fear. When we have control, for example, um, let's say um, I need to go to a birthday party and I am afraid my ex-boyfriend is going to be there. So I take along one or two friends with me that know and they have had their instructions. If he's there, this is what you're supposed to do. 
because we want to try and control that situation. And um, that is a very real situation for a lot of us. So with that control, I am reacting out of fear in order to protect myself, but I am actually getting away from connection. So I am isolating myself. I am putting like, not just boundaries, but walls around myself. And with that, we can work actually really hard to protect ourselves. An example in the Bible is Martha and Mary. It's a parable that Jesus told, or not a parable, but um, two friends of Jesus, where he went for dinner. And Mary sits at Jesus' feet. She's connecting with him. She's listening to him. She's getting to know him. She's spending time with him. And Mary, there are two sisters, uh, Martha is actually working in the kitchen. She's running back and forth to kind of be a very hospice, hospitable hostess to Jesus and, and the disciples and his friends because they're at their house. But she lacks to spend time with Jesus. Now, she is what we're called. She has her heart in the right place. But I wonder what makes her drive to be performance driven because she goes to Jesus and she's like, Jesus, I want you to go tell my sister that she better come and help me because, well, I'm doing all the work alone and can't you see I'm doing all the work alone? Like, it's not okay. And well, first of all, in that culture, it was a cultural thing because in, in that culture, just after Christ like uh, was born. So that would be somewhere in the year 30 or so. Um, that was normal that women took care of the household and were good hostesses and took care of the food and served the men that was a kind of culture but also um i wonder as a woman as a student even how often are we not performance driven just because we're afraid we're not going to be good enough we want to be good hosts we want to have good grades we want to belong and in that sense, there is actually a lot of strife there and a lot of performance driven fun, the fun reaction in order to be perceived good enough. And she actually, Marta goes this far as to be like, hey, Mary, you need to come and help me. Jesus, show her you disapprove and tell her she needs to come help me. Now, Jesus reacts differently and he says, Marta, she's actually doing the better thing. She's coming to sit at my feet, spend time with me, connect with me. We're building relationship, we're connecting and we're building a friendship over here. And I wanna do the same with you, but you are so busy and so afraid and so performance driven that that is actually not happening. So she's like, what is up here? Um, So she is actually, what is up here, Jesus? So here in this story, Jesus points out to us the importance of connection. So fear keeps us from connecting intimately and deeply with people. It actually isolates us because we are constantly looking for a threat. We are constantly looking for what can possibly harm us. We're constantly looking for control. Fear will actually keep us, put us in a bubble with thorns around it and, and it will smother us until we are isolated from people. Now, this school year, this academic year, and, and even just this year in general that we're starting in September for a lot of people has a lot of insecurities that we cannot control. But the reality is, we can only control ourselves and our own reactions. And I wanna ask you today, is your reaction fear-based or is it love-based? Is your reaction so fear-based, so threat-based, based on things you wanna control but you don't have control over, that it is actually keeping you away from people, from connection? Are you afraid of consequences of punishment? Um, are you afraid what will happen, for example, when you miss class or when you get sick? Or are you afraid of, of what will happen when you do not live up to people's standards, uh, to society's standards? 
And I want to ask you today, how much control do you have over that? Because I can tell you right now, you have zero control over that. And the only areas that you have control over is actually over your own life, your own time, your resources, your money, uh, your body, the way you spend your time, your own thoughts, um, over the way you study, how much effort you put in. Um, you only have control over your behavior, your actions, your thoughts, your being, your time, and over how money, yeah, over how you react out of fear or out of love. So are you doing that based on fear? Now, often, if it's not looking like fight, flight, or freeze, or fawn, it is going to look like performance. So one of the things I learned over the last few years and that I had to become very aware of and that I'm still growing in as well is that when I go into fear response and I cannot control something, then I very often go into high performance, but like way into overdrive. I become overly responsible and I'll either start in, when I was a student, I started partying a lot, but I would also work very hard, like literally until very, very late at night in order to be able to control how people would perceive me, how people would accept me in order to be able to control uh, situations or people that would reject me or not. And that was my way of doing that. And that is a very much a fear-based reaction. So how you are behaving right now are you acting out of fear out of control or are you acting out of fear or love now 1 john 4 verse 16 says and so we know and rely on the love god has for us so we know and rely on the love god has for us god is love so he doesn't just just give love, he is love. It's his personification. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So we know and rely on the love God has for us. Now God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So this basically means that John here, who writes this, and the audience he writes this to, they, they need to spend enough time with him to get to know the love of God. To get to know the love God has specifically for them. And then to learn to rely on that love that God has for them. But if God in himself is love, then we can find those three things directly straight at the source, which is him. Now, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So whoever lives in love lives in God. So you cannot have that love as a source in your life without God living in you and you living in God. But what does that mean, you living in God? That means that you intimately know God. You know him. He knows you. He knows you by name. He knows details about you. And you have spent quality time with him. Now, I have a few very, very good friends that I spend a lot of time with. And the more time we've spent together over the last few years, the better I get to know them. And I had this one friend um, a situation that happened and that friend texted me back this week and after that and she was like oh, I sometimes forget how well you know me and that is just because we've spent so much time together but also because we both live in God and in his love and we are able to do that for each other without having to live in that amount of fear or control so today I want to make this practical for you. There is no fear in love. 
But in order to know love, rely on God's love for us, we need to get to a point where we prioritize over everything and anything our intentional connection with the Father of love. Now I'm saying father here specifically, or maybe even better would be daddy because God is a God of family. He is a daddy. And when you've accepted Jesus into your life, you've become his child, his most precious beloved child that he can't wait to get to know and make awesome memories with. And well, if you've ever seen children, a child that reacts out of fear versus a child that reacts out of love. A child that reacts out of fear will hide in a closet or will, will run away or uh, will go read books or will run to his room out of fear, out of fear of what the parent and the, and the punishment that will come, for example, when it did something wrong. And they will start maybe even lying or trying to cover up their tracks. But a child that reacts out of love, even when they have a fight, they will run straight to their father and give him a hug because they know that love does not change. And you need to get to know God. You need to get to know his presence in order to get to know that love that he has for you because God loves you very deeply and intimately. And he wants you to be able to reside in his love and to rely on his love because it's the one thing that is never changing that and that is never going to fail you. So I want to encourage you this year to actually start spending so much time with God that you're going to notice God's love for me is something I can rely on. I might not be able to control my environment. I might not be able to control my circumstances, but I can rely on one thing. And that is my father. Now, when God's love comes in your life and you start living out of a place of relying on the love that God has for you, and you know that love, both in your heart and in your mind, you've experienced that love. That's the moment when fear, it just disappears because there is no room for a boat. Now, what is that practically going to look like? Well, first of all, I wanna ask you as a student at the beginning of the student year, prioritize spending time with God. And what I mean by that is you, we all spend a lot of time with our best friend. I want to encourage you this year, get to know Jesus, get to know God the Father even better than your best friend. Spend even more time with him because you'll see it will affect the rest of your life completely. Then secondly, you can do that through the word and through prayer. Now, reading the word, that is basically God telling us about himself. It's him making himself known to us. It's him making his love known to us. And I want to give you an example of how that has become real for me. And for example, Psalm 23. So um, one of the things I did with one of my mentors is basically go sit down, close my eyes. And we read Psalm 23. And at one point it says that he makes me lie down in green pastures. So I closed my eyes and I saw in front of my eyes green pastures where I was going to lie down. And the Bible speaks about the Holy Spirit being like a river of living water that springs up out of a well. So in that picture, I saw a well spring up and a river of living water flowing through that. And it's flowing through my soul. So this is what is actually happening in my soul. This is real to me. The Bible also speaks about Jesus going back to heaven in order to prepare a house for me. So God is building a house for me. Okay, so what does that look like? So you close your eyes and ask God to show you these things. 
ask God to show you what his love looks like. And um, when I read these scriptures for one of the first times, I closed my eyes and asked God, what does it look like? And God showed me a heart. And I have a thing with anatomy. So for me, this was very thrilling. But he showed me a heart. And he carved wood and I have my name on that heart. And he was like, this is my heart. This is how much I've loved you. This is what I've done for you. And that was such a real vivid image for me. And it still is today. I do not doubt God's love for me. Yet there are some moments that I still need to learn to rely on that love. And that is a journey of discipleship that we need to walk with Jesus. But reality is the more time we spend with him, the better we get to know him, the more we're going to learn to trust him and rely on him. Now, the next thing is true prayer. And what I've said right now is making the word come alive for you. But the more you're going to pray, prayer is a dialogue between you and God. It's you speaking, for example, telling him about your day and asking him your questions. But it's also leaving room for God to speak to you. And God wants to speak to you because he wants to tell you how much you mean to him, how much he values you, how much he loves you. So today, with that said, I want to encourage you at the beginning of this year, make a time every day where you are going to spend quality time with Jesus, just like you would with your best friend and where you can get to know his love. Now, start by, for example, a Bible plan or reading a portion of scripture that you've wanted to read a long time already and ask yourself, how is God's love revealed in this portion of scripture? And then go sit down, close your eyes and let God show you. And then start praying, start praying, praying for, for yourself, for you to experience more of God in your life, praying for other people, uh, praying through scripture, through the word of God. And you will see that it, it is going to start becoming a reality for you, that God's love in your life and you living in God, in the God of love. All right. So let me pray with you. Father, I thank you for this amazing group of students, this amazing group of people. I thank you, Lord, that um, you are a good God and that you are a God of love, that you're not just a God of love. You are love itself, Father. There is no greater source of love than you. And Father, I thank you that we can abide in your love, that we get to abide in your love, Father, and that you wanted to reveal that to us. So God, Jesus, I, I come before your throne today with everyone that's watching. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we can put our focus and our priorities on you, Lord. We are not in control but you are and your perfect love is sufficient for us, Lord, to, to be able to go through the day and through whatever challenges and seasons you bring along our way. I thank you, Lord, that your perfect love, that you yourself cast out all fear and that there is no more room for that in our lives. So Lord, I pray for just a revelation of your love for us and how real and tangible that is in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. Have an awesome week and weekends. Tomorrow is Friday. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your weekends and talk to you soon. Keep posted. Keep on our Instagram and our Facebook pages for more updates soon to follow on what our program will look like um, during the new semester. And I hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>